Well, hey friends, welcome to the podcast. This is Monday Fire episode number 55, where I'm going to talk about pivoting. Now, every time I talk about pivoting, I think of that scene in the show Friends. And if you haven't seen the show Friends, and I don't even know if, I don't even know what you're doing here. How can we even be in relationship if you did not watch Friends with Ross and Phoebe and all of our favorites back in the, was it the 80s and the 90s? I don't even know. Anyway, so whenever I, I think of pivoting, I think of that, but I want to talk to you about pivoting today because I just got off a really powerful coaching call with a bunch of the women who are in my business group that I coach on social media. And um, two of the women are in, they're really in a season of pivoting. Um, they're pivoting in their businesses. One woman in particular is an incredible artist, but God has given her um, suddenly like eyes to see the plight of um, women and children who are stuck in sex trafficking. And so she's feeling like this huge pivot to, you know, to, to kind of leave the direction that God had her in and, and move to something different. Another one of the ladies I was talking to has um, had a childcare in her home for, I think going on a decade and she's getting ready to pivot into wedding planning. And so we were talking about pivoting and I was telling these two women, that pivoting is so powerful, you guys. It's so powerful because when you're making a pivot that God really wants you to, it's it's moving you from this place you were and it's just it's shifting you into where you're actually supposed to be. Which let me just tell you, I have pivoted so many times in my business and in my life, which is a lot easier to do than God plucking you out of a situation and dropping you into another. Can I get a yes and an amen? If you've ever been plucked, let me just tell you, you would rather pivot. Plucking hurts. <laughs> when God's like, and I tried to get you to pivot, sis, but now I've got to literally pick you up and remove you and put you over here, Jen, where you should be. That is way worse than this like pivot, which is like, it's softer. And, um, and I think it's easier to adjust to. And, um, and it just, to me, it feels much better than being plucked out of a situation. So we were talking about pivots and I was telling these ladies that I love when I see entrepreneurs pivoting and you want to know why? Because it's always shifting them into the thing that I feel like is closer to what they should be doing or what God wants them to be doing or what their calling is. And, and it's so powerful. And it's so powerful because the truth is when you're pivoting, you're not, you're deciding I am not staying stuck. And the truth is anybody can stay stuck. Anybody can stay stuck. And most people do stay stuck. Most people do. I'm going to read you a line out of fear is not the boss of you. Um, a lot of people stay stuck because at least they know stuck. At least stuck is familiar. And unfortunately, familiar feels good even when it's bad. So think about like the people who you know who are in horrible relationships. And like you can see it a million miles away and you're like, girl, what are you doing? What are you thinking? But they stay stuck with that same person in that horrible relationship for way too long when like every, it's so obvious to everybody else, right? That she needs to get out of that thing. But listen, a lot of times women in particular will stay stuck in relationships, in jobs, in situations way longer than they ever should with people that they should not be with doing things they should not be doing because at least it's familiar. And what I know um, from personal experience, from studying from the Lord himself is that if you are a woman who has experienced um, an amount of trauma in your life, you are, have more of a tendency to stay stuck versus pivot versus change. Versus say, you know what, I'm done here. I'm picking up my toys and going elsewhere. A woman who has been through trauma is way more likely to stay stuck in a situation because it's familiar. Um, simply because when you've had trauma in your life, and by the way, trauma doesn't necessarily have to be like, um, I think when we think of trauma, we think of a huge situation that happened. And yes, that definitely caused trauma, but also trauma can be a lot more subtle. It can be, um, learning things, uh, you know, about yourself. It can be like a bomb dropped on you of news that can be traumatic. Um, a, a move can be traumatic. A loss of a friendship can be traumatic. And by the way, you don't get to define what's traumatic for other people. Did you know that? Like something that may not be traumatic for you can definitely be traumatic for another. So women that have experienced trauma, a lot of times they will stay stuck a lot longer than they should. And the truth is it's easy to stay stuck. 
I will tell you this though, staying, staying stuck will always feel really tight. It will feel like you have, you don't have a lot of options because you don't when you're stuck. You know that you shouldn't be there. You know you should be getting out of that, maybe pivoting or something, but you continue to stay stuck and it feels really tight. Now, the opposite of that is pivoting, okay? So pivoting, like I want you to picture, God's given me this, this um, <clears throat> picture in my mind a long time ago. It, when I see a pivot in my mind, I see a gate, okay? So I want you to picture like an old farm gate. Maybe I'm going back to that since I'm a country girl. Um, at heart. Well, I say I'm a country girl at heart, but I lived in the city in the country. So yeah, I'm not really a country girl, but, but I was surrounded by country. There you go. Growing up in Iowa. So when you imagine a gate, like it swings open, right. And you walk through it. And, and I'm always picturing like, um, that kind of a pivot, like the swinging of a gate. And then there being like a field, like a wide open place on the other side of that. Did you know there's even scripture um, it is in, uh, where is it at? Is it in Proverbs where it talks about, he will bring you into like a wide open place. There's a Bible scripture that talks about, he brings you into a large place, a spacious place, a wide open place. And I always think of like that gate being the, the thing, like the wide open places are on the other side of that. And I think of the gate as like, you know, it pivots when you picture a gate, like the gate stays attached to like the post, right? Like the pillar thing. And so what I wanted to encourage some of you with today is the reason that that pivot works is because it stays attached. Like pivots work when the gate just doesn't fly off of the post into the field. Pivots work when you stay attached to the thing that keeps it grounded, right? So I encourage these two ladies who are pivoting right now. First of all, I just gave them so many like thumbs up and kudos and all of the things, because pivoting is hard. It takes guts. It takes courage. You want to know one of the most dangerous prayers I think that you can ever pray? God, give me guts. Because he'll give you opportunities, like asking for patience. <laughs> then you get cut off in traffic 10 minutes later. You got to be careful what you pray for, right? So I was telling both these women, like, as you pivot, like, really stay grounded, you know, to what the word of God says, at checking in on the Lord on what are, is, is this right? You know, what are, are you sure? <laughs> Lord, one more time. Am I sure that I heard correctly? But staying attached to the thing, the, the, the post, the support pole, the thing that gives you very life is what's going to make that pivot as powerful as possible. Listen, we are in a season of pivoting in this country. We just are. And I've been talking about pivoting for a long, long time in my business coaching. But there are so many people who are pivoting right now and they're feeling like they need to reinvent themselves. No, you don't. Just stay attached to the post. Stay attached to the support and just shift. Well, what does that actually look like, Jen? Well, what's God putting in front of you right now? What opportunity is knocking at your door right now that it never has before? What is suddenly has caught your attention and is keeping you up at night because you're either excited or you can't get it off your mind? Those are all such really great signs as to what God's trying to pivot you into. Now, will pivoting um, feel very vulnerable as you leave the thing that you are so attached to? Absolutely. Will it feel scary as heck? 100%. Will it feel like standing on the internet naked? Perhaps. Perhaps. But I promise you this. When God talks in the Bible about wide open places and spacious places, and he's bringing you into um, you know, a large place, it's because you are not designed to stay stuck. You are not designed to stay in a tight place. So listen, sis, pivot to the glory of God if that's what you feel like God's doing with you right now because you don't want to be plucked. You don't want God to pluck you out of a current situation and put you in another. Pivot, 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 pivot. I'm here for the whole pivoting. I'm here for it, Lord. I'm here for it. I'm here for you too. If this spoke to your heart, would you do me a favor? Go over to Instagram. If you don't follow me there, why? Come on, why? But um, I love my Instagram DMs. So tag me on something. I'll see it in my DMs. I'll message you back. If this uh, podcast though spoke to your heart, please let me know. And if you know someone who is pivoting right now, because I know you do, you all know friends who have been laid off. You all know friends who have businesses that they've had to close a brick and mortar and now they're going to have to do something different. You all know people who are having to pivot. Would you forward this to them? I hope it will be an encouragement for someone's soul. All right, bless you friends. Till next week. Bye-bye.